Hell of a hell of a she's so fine. Hell of a hell of a blows my mind. Hell of a hell of a lights my day. What's good, guys? Today is Monday, August the 10th, 2020. I wanted to do a video regarding the Kanika Jenkins case, but I wanted to go over something real briefly about it's in regards to this video beforehand, kind of preface it with this. Why two people see the same thing but have different memories? This article was wrote by Julian Matthews, Monash University, December 28, 2018. All right. Does it ever strike you as odd that you and a friend can experience the same event at the same time, but come away with different memories of what happened? So why is it that people can recall the same thing so differently? We all know memory isn't perfect, and most memory differences are relatively trivial, but sometimes they can have serious consequences. Imagine if you both witnessed a crime. What factors led to memory differences and whom should we trust? There are three important aspects to memory. Encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encoding is how we get information into the brain. Storage is how we retain information over time. And retrieval is how we get information out of the brain. Differences in each or a combination of these aspects might help explain why memories differ from one person to another. How different people encode memories. Memory encoding starts with perception. That's so important. The organization and interpretation of sensory information from the environment. The salience of sensory information, for example, how bright a light is or how loud a sound is, is important, but perception does not rely on salience alone. Rather, perception is strongly affected by what we have experienced in the past and our expectations of what we might experience in the future. These effects are called top-down processes and have a big impact on whether we successfully encode a memory. One of the most important top-down processes is attention. Our ability to focus selectively on parts of the world to the exclusion of other parts. While certain visual items can be perceived or encoded into memory with little or possibly no attention, Attending to items is hugely beneficial for perception and memory. How different people focus their attention on an event will affect what they remember. For example, your preference for a particular sporting team can bias your attention and memory. A study of American football found that sports fans tended to remember rough play instigated by their opponent rather than their own side. Age also contributes to differences in memory because our ability to encode the context of memories diminishes as we get older. That's, you know, that's, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. We're not going to talk about age, but it does have an impact. Contact, context is an important feature of memory. Studies show that if we attend to both an item and its context, we remember the item better than if we attend to the item alone. For example, we are more inclined to encode the location of our car keys if we focus on both the keys and how we have placed them in a room rather than just focusing on the keys alone. How different people store memories. Memories are first encoded into a temporary memory store called short-term memory. Short-term memories decay quickly and only have a capacity of three or four bits at a time. But we can group larger bits of information into manageable chunks to fit into memory. For instance, consider the, consider the challenging letter sequence. C-I-A-A-B-C-F-B-I. 
This can be chunked into the easily memorized CIA, ABC, FBI. Information in short-term memory is held in a highly accessible state so that we can bind features together. Techniques such as verbal rehearsal, repeating words aloud in our own head, allow us to consolidate our short-term memories into long-term memories. Long-term memory has an enormous capacity. We can remember at least 10,000 pictures according to a study from the 70s. Memories can differ between people on the basis of how we consolidate them. Many studies have investigated how memory consolidation can be improved. Sleep is a well-known example. A study found that long-term memory can also be enhanced by taking caffeine immediately after learning. The study used caffeine tablets to carefully control dosage, but this builds on growing evidence for the benefits of moderate coffee consumption. How different people retrieve memories. Retrieving episodic memories, our memory of events, is a complex process because we, we must combine objects, places, and people into a sing single meaningful event. The complexity of memory retrieval is exemplified by tip of the tongue states, the common and frustrating experience that we hold something in long-term memory, but we cannot retrieve it right now. The emergence of brain imaging has meant we have identified many brain areas that are important for memory retrieval, but the full picture of how retrieval works remains mysterious. There are many reasons that memory retrieval can differ from one person to another. Our ability to retrieve memories can be affected by our health. For example, memory retrieval is impaired if we have a headache or are stressed. Retrieval is also affected by the outside world. Even the wording of questions can change how we recall an event. A study instructed people to view films of car accidents and then ask them to judge the speed the cars were moving. If people were asked how fast the cars were moving when they, quote, crashed, end quote, or, quote, smashed, end quote, into each other, they judged the cars as moving faster than if the words, quote, contacted, end quote, or, quote, hit, end quote, were used. Memory retrieval can also be affected by the presence of other people. When groups of people work together, they often experience collaborative inhibition. A deficit in overall memory performance when compared to the same group if they work separately and their memories are pulled after each individual has recounted their version. Effects such as collaborative inhibition highlight why memory differences occur, but also why eyewitness testimony is so problematic. Thankfully, the proliferation of smartphones has led to the development of innovative apps, such as iWitnessed, that are designed to help witnesses and victims preserve and protect their memories. Technology such as this and knowledge of memory encoding, storage, and retrieval can help us determine whom to trust when differences in memory occur. So, I wanted to read that and preface what I was going to say because it just kind of goes into why people in the same situation can recall different things. And when you look at it, <clears throat> um, and, some, and you have a room of 20 people, and they're all recalling the same exact thing, that's not a good sign. That's not the way our brains are set up to work. People should be recalling different events because of how they take in the information, how they store it, and also how they relay it through their mouth. <laughs> um, so let's look at, at one thing. This is just a very brief little look um, at these uh, narratives that the police took from the partygoers the night of the party at the Crown Plaza in September of 2017. And there's one thing, I'm just going to take one thing and show you what I'm talking about. Okay? Okay, this is Bree Bree's statement that she gave to police on September the 20th, 2017. And what I'm specifically looking for is about the alcohol. So, 
This is what Brew Brew says. They picked up a Bluetooth speaker for the party. Alcohol. Large bottle of Hennessy Cognac. Unknown exact size. From a liquor store. Near the intersection of Kedzie and Franklin. Later determined to be Franklin Food and Liquor. And Cannabis. Alright. Brewery later says, says in her statement, Brewery stated she was unsure how much Kanika drank because she left the party with CC and Kanika was gone when she returned. Alright. Monifa says, uh, picking a Bluetooth speaker for the party, alcohol from a local liquor store later identified as Franklin Food and Liquor and Cannabis. Monifa, Monifa further states, all three, it says, that if one of them went to the bathroom, all three went together. And that would be blank, Kanika, and blank. And we're going to assume, which is a scary thing, but we're going to assume that she's talking about her, Monifa, Shemaya, and Kanika. Monifa stated she got very intoxicated during the party and even had to vomit at one point. Now, I don't know if she's speaking about Kanika or herself, but that's what she says about the alcohol. All right, this is uh, Irene's sister. This is what she says. During the party, she stated Kanika appeared very intoxicated, and she saw her stumbling inside the hotel room. She stated Kanika was dancing and shouting at Irene to get up and dance with her. She observed Kanika drinking Hennessy straight from the bottle and said, What are you doing, girl? That's a man's drink. Don't your chest burn? Kanika responded, No, girl, I'm good. She stated she took the bottle of Hennessy away from Kanika because Kanika appeared so intoxicated. She didn't see Kanika smoke weed or take any drugs. All right. There we are with the Hennessy again. All right, this is Arnisha's statement she gave to the police. Kanika appeared drunk later in the night as she was dancing and trying to get Irene to dance with her. Arnisha stated she does not think Kanika smokes weed or takes any drugs, but just drinks alcohol. She went on through the drug test that Kanika had coming up for her new job. Then she says... Ernisha stated Kanika appeared to be laughing and having a good time whenever he, she saw Kanika. Ernisha saw Kanika holding a bottle of Hennessy with only a little alcohol left in the bottle. Alright. Alright. I'm pretty sure this is a little tie statement, but I won't swear to it because I don't have my notes right here in front of me. But it doesn't matter. That's not what I'm looking at. Alright. He says... Kanika arrived with two friends. Kanika did not appear as if she had already been consuming alcohol or anything for that matter. He did... Wait a minute. Okay, yeah. He did say there was alcohol and marijuana at the party, but nothing further. All right? All right, this is Shamaya's interview, and her mother is with her. And the only reason I say that, because it does matter, <clears throat> excuse me, is because Shamaya is appearing to put on for her mama. So, and you can reinterpret that as a lie or what have you. But it says, um, she stated that in the room they were all just sitting around on the bed. And she stated that she, Shemaya, did not drink or smoke any weed. But she remembers that Kanika had one cup of alcohol the entire time they were at the party. She is not sure if Kanika refilled that one cup or not. Alright. Alright, this is Neff's statement. 
he says, We asked him what, if anything, she had been drinking at the party, she being Kanika. Neff stated he saw her drinking Hennessy and Red Bull. Unable to tell us how much she had drunk that night. Denied seeing her smoking or taking any pills when questioned. Alright. Alright, this is one of the females that was at the party that came in a group. So, one of the group's girls. This person advised that she had brought with them, or they had brought with them, a bottle of Hennessy to share amongst the five females. All right. She says there were drinking, there was drinking of liquor and smoking marijuana taking place. She said she didn't know anybody else at the party besides the people she came with. She further stated she was unfamiliar with Kanika and did not know her prior, was unable to describe her activities or interactions because she did not, quote, pay attention to her, end quote, while she was there. All right. This next party goer says, um, they asked if she knew her, knew Kanika. She said she did not know her aside from passing by her at the party. They asked if she recalled Jenkins drinking or smoking at the party, and she stated that she did not see her drinking or smoking. Another party goer. When asked if she herself drank or smoked at the party, she denied drinking or smoking at the party. She stated that she did drink Hennessy prior to going to the hotel party. All right, this party goer. Uh, they asked her if she herself had been smoking or drinking at the party. She admitted to having smoked marijuana as well as having drunk Hennessy. When I asked her if she saw Kanika drinking, she stated yes. I asked her how much she drank at first. She stated that Kanika drank one cup at first. However, as the evening went on, she observed Kanika drinking straight from the bottle. I asked her what Kanika was drinking. She stated, Hennessy. I asked her again roughly how much Hennessy Kanika may have consumed. She stated most of the bottle. And then in parentheses it says fifth of Hennessy. Alright. This is another party goer. One that arrived with the group of girls. Inform me that the group of girls brought their own bottle of Hennessy, which was retrieved from the car and brought back into the hotel room party. Once inside, she alleged to not knowing anyone besides the females she traveled with, and blank. She had at least, quote, three cups of Hennessy. Alright. She then goes on to say she did not know Kanika Jenkins prior and did not really speak with her throughout the party, but remembers her as being, quote, social, end quote, and nothing suspicious or out of the ordinary. Unable to describe the activities or interactions of Jenkins because she did not, quote, pay attention to her, end quote, while there. All right. Next party goer. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Stated... He had known Kanika for about six months, had only seen her about three or four hotel parties. Stated he did not see Kanika use any drugs whatsoever, and she was drinking only alcohol. Stated Kanika was having a good time at the party, dancing and singing with everyone, and did appear intoxicated. Further describes Kanika's state as she was, quote, feeling her liquor. Does not recall when Kanika left the party. And that's all he says as it pertains to alcohol. Next party goer was unsure if Jenkins had been drinking alcohol or using any types of drugs. She was not paying attention to her during the parter, party. Further goes on to state that she herself was socializing with a with her quote group of girls. So she must have came in a group of girls and didn't know anyone else at the party. They had been consuming alcohol from the bottle of Hennessy her group of girls brought to the party. Advised she herself had several cups. 
and left with the same group they arrived with. All right. Next party goer. He himself was drinking Hennessy and smoking weed. He knew Kanika from the area. Knows there was drug use at the party, including marijuana. Remembers Jenkins was sitting near the bed talking with friends. All right. He advised that he remembers Jenkins drinking heavily from a Hennessy bottle while at the party. All right. This party goer says that she had knew Kanika for approximately two years. Stated that when she went to the room, everyone was drinking and smoking weed. Stated that when she saw Kanika in the room, that she was not acting like her usual self. Stated she observed Kanika smoking weed and drinking alcohol in the room at some point during the party. Alright, this is Smiley. She says that when she arrived, individuals were drinking, smoking marijuana, and taking various pills. Unable to provide specifics on the pills, but she says that she herself had consumed alcohol and smoked marijuana. She had consumed alcohol, smoked marijuana, or taken any pills. It doesn't, I don't know if it if that's a mistake or what, but it says then she denied having taken part in any of those activities. So they, that's a big mix up, mix up right there. Stated that she did smoke marijuana prior to coming to the Crown Plaza. It later says, I asked if she saw Jenkins drinking, smoking, or taking drugs. She stated that she didn't see Jenkins drinking, smoking, or taking pills, but that it also didn't mean that she hadn't used anything. She then indicated that all of Jenkins' friends were drinking there. Alright, next party goer. Said she didn't really know Kanika, but she had seen her around the neighborhood. Advised she observed Jenkins sitting on or near the bed, quote, drinking liquor out of a cup, end quote, and socializing with blank and blank. Unaware of any additional information regarding Jenkins and her actions that evening because she wasn't paying attention to her. Party was busy with people. She knew the groups at the party to use, quote, pills, end quote, and smoke weed, but was unable to advise what type of pills. All right, this is Mike Mike's statement. Said there was liquor and drugs going around. He advised that Jenkins was, quote, on the verge, end quote, of being drunk before he left. She had been drinking Hennessy, he believed. He has seen her drunk and high in the past, but he claimed, quote, not like that. All right, this is Killa. He says... He advised that Jenkins had been drinking Hennessy while at the party. Stated that Jenkins and, quote, the girls, end quote, have taken pills, ecstasy, and smoked in the past, but unsure if they had the night of the party. Quan. Quan says that he advised there was a lot of, quote, drinking and drugs going around, end quote. He knew there to be marijuana, but could not recall if other drugs were at the location. He said people were, quote, drinking and partying, and that everyone was, quote, friendly and from the neighborhood. And he himself admits that he was intoxicated. This is one of the Wilson brothers, and his statement says that when Kanika stood up to um, give him a hug, she started to stumble and was swaying like she was drunk. He stated that after she gathered herself, they both gave each other a hug. He stated that she seemed drunk and that she had been drinking a lot. 
He stated that he knows she does not smoke weed, but was not sure if she took any pills or ecstasy. This is Pucky. Pucky says that he observed Jenkins, quote, intoxicated, and he noticed once she got up from the bed area. He described her as, quote, wobbly, end quote, and, quote, swaying as she walked, end quote. He advised that she was, quote, just intoxicated, End quote, and was still socializing and being friendly, quote, having a good time, end quote. Next party goer. As the party went on, he remembers seeing Jenkins drink, drinking, quote, from the bottle of Hennessy, end quote. He saw Jenkins, quote, got messy, end quote, and fell asleep for a short period of time on the bed, and no one was messing with her or being inappropriate at all. He said that he has known Jenkins and she could not handle her liquor and has seen her drunk on many occasions. He said, quote, she was just that girl that couldn't drink much. Nothing against her. Just how it is, end quote. Goes on to say, there was liquor, Hennessy, and Remy Martin and marijuana at the party. He was drinking Remy and smoking marijuana. He did not know if Jenkins was on or taking pills at the party or if she smoked at the time, but stated she was drunk and was speaking casually with her friends at or near the bed prior to them leaving. Says he <clears throat> saw that blank and blank left with Jenkins to go home and they had no issues. Jenkins was swaying and, quote, stumbling, end quote, to the door. All right. Next party goer. Noticed Jenkins drinking liquor out of a cup and that she appeared intoxicated, but did not pay attention to her because, quote, a lot of people were there, end quote. He said, quote, everyone was drunk and high, end quote. Next party goer. Observed Kanika Jenkins at the party, quote, party, quote, chilling and drinking. She was social and normal, end quote, normal like that at the parties, end quote, they have. She was, quote, drunk, end quote, and hanging out with friends casually. Next party goer. He advised that Jenkins was, quote, drunk, end quote, and observed she had been drinking alcohol, but was not paying attention to her. Stated there was liquor and marijuana going around the party. Stated he was drinking but not smoking. Next party goer. He says there was Hennessy and marijuana, quote, going around. Believes some people were on pills, ecstasy, but did not see any at the party. Further states that he advised he saw Jenkins before she left, but she was just talking with friends and, quote, drinking from a cup. He did not pay attention to her as there were, quote, there was, quote, plenty of people there, end quote. And then we get to Irene's statement. Now listen carefully to what Irene says, or what the detective says Irene says. If you really want to get technical about it. Irene stated she did not see Kanika smoke weed or take any drugs during the party, but observed Kanika drink a lot of Hennessy. Irene stated Kanika was drinking straight from the large bottle of Hennessy. She stated Kanika seemed sober when she first got to the party, but later appeared very drunk. Irene stated, Kanika would repeatedly stand up to dance and yell for Irene to get up and dance, stating, quote, Get up, girl, it's your birthday, end quote. Irene stated Kanika appeared so intoxicated that her sister took the bottle of alcohol away from Kanika. She stated she told Kanika to stop drinking and let her sister finish off the bottle. 
Irene stated she was unsure what size bottle of Hennessy Kanika had. But, as if to say, but this much I do know. It was the large bottle that had a handle on it. I'm repeat that. Irene stated she was unsure what size bottle of Hennessy Kanika had. But she knew what it looked like. That's what she's saying. But it was the large bottle that had a handle on it. All right. Let me just tell you why that's BS. Hennessy does not make a bottle with a handle on it. Period. I certainly can't find one. And I've looked. And what stirred all this up is I have um, someone that watches my channel, Jay Glover. Thank God for you. Because I had previously thought this. Because back in my heyday when I drank Hennessy, I don't ever recall there being a bottle with a handle on it. And I rolled with some, you know, <laughs> some bottlers, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I was thinking of all the alcohol that I had purchased throughout my life. And, you know, Martini and Rossi, Gravasi, I was thinking of all these things. And I just simply couldn't place a Hennessy bottle with a handle. But then I was like, you know... I'm not a big drinker, so I don't really know. But then when I got another comment on it, then I was like, all right, this is worth looking into. So, I cannot find any picture, any website, even on the Hennessy website itself, where <laughs> there's a bottle of Hennessy with a handle on it. You're just not going to find it. And if you can, I would love to see it. Would absolutely love to. Because I've had zero luck in finding that. Alright? And I have been through the gamut of websites. I mean, this is just a plain old Google Hennessy sizing search. And I can't even find it here. You know, just even an empty bottle. Anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting that Irene specifically recalls this bottle. And now everybody says it's Hennessy. So, this much has to be true because everybody's recalling the same thing more or less. No other brands of alcohol were mentioned except Hennessy. And it's in a good portion of the um, interviews that Hennessy has brought up. So, yeah, so what's really going on here? <laughs> what is really going on? And I'm going to tell you, I searched long and hard for this bottle. Long and hard. And just could not come up with anything. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Just how specific Irene got in that interview. With the police. And that that's just simply not true. That's simply just not true. So let me know what you think about that in the comments and thanks Jay Glover I appreciate you because I don't know that I would have looked at it again I promise I don't so I'm so glad that you spoke up and said something I appreciate that you guys have a great day